on Law Weekly, we'll look at the moves by the lawmakers to amend the Electoral Act and specifically the proposed amendment on the sequence of elections. We have the views of some lawyers on the issue. On our interview segment, we talk alternative dispute resolution with the chairman board of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce International Arbitration Center, senior advocate of Nigeria, Babatunde Fagunulu, plus our weekly recap of some of the top trending stories from the courts. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the program. I am Shola Shoyeli. The World Bank's Ease of Doing Business report released late last year shows that Nigeria improved slightly on the index, moving up 24 spots better than its ranking in 2017. The index typically scores countries on how easy it is to set up and operate a business. But since the ratings have things continued to improve, have the laws stepped up to keep pace with global trends? And what are some of the things the country can do better to continue to make the country favorable for business and investments? To get answers to some of these questions, I spoke to Mr. Babatunde Fagbonlu, a senior advocate of Nigeria who specializes in commercial litigation and renders legal advice on a wide range of commercial transactions. He's also regularly represented Nigerians as well as foreign and multinational clients in ad hoc arbitrations and arbitrations administered by several arbitral institutions. Mr. Fagman Olu joins me on the program now. Nigeria improved slightly on the ease of doing business index, but we're still not where we should be as a country. What are the things that you think that we can do better? Yes, indeed, that's correct. Um, we've moved from 169 to 145 out of a total number of countries of 190. So we're 145 out of 190. It's, uh, we moved up 24 points. That's not bad, but I think there's a lot to be improved on. Uh, one of the things that the World Bank looks at when it determines uh, how it ranks uh, countries on the ease of doing business is the uh, efficacy with which contracts are enforced. And essentially that, that focuses on the judiciary and the other systems that exist for resolving commercial disputes and enforcing commercial obligations. Now, apparently, uh, we've not scored too well in that, in that area. It's one of the things that impacts on our ranking, and it's one of the things that we need to focus on. So what are the shortcomings that you have identified? Well, I mean, if you consider that the average litigation time, the average time for resolving a contractual dispute by litigation is anything from, I mean, and I'm talking about moving from the high court through the whole spectrum of the Court of Appeal up to the Supreme Court could be anything from 10 to 15 years, and that's an optimistic assessment. Uh, you little wonder that most businessmen will feel that's, that's not a very attractive um, scenario. Now that from experience is what prevails. You know, it's actually possible to keep a court in court for 30 years, from the High Court up to the Supreme Court. To keep a case in court? Uh, for 30 years. And um, those are the things, those are among the things that businessmen find quite a bit of a disincentive and some of the things that we need to focus on. There's been a lot of talk about ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, but how really can it help? It can help, and indeed, it, it's good you mentioned that because it's one of the things that the World Bank puts on its uh, indices of evaluating a country's uh, system for resolving and enforcing commercial obligations. Um, alternative Dispute Resolution, which consists of a whole number of arrangements like arbitration, mediation, conciliation, expert neutral evaluation um, is a good alternative in the sense that you know it supports the system uh, among other things it helps to decongest the courts so a lot of cases that could have gone to the courts can actually be resolved outside the court system and you can leave for the court only those cases which require a judicial intervention so the very fact that it, it creates an alternative that decongests the courts very easily points to its uh, potential to improve uh, you know, efficiency in the court system itself. But the other thing, of course, that people dwell on a lot is the fact that it's also good for maintaining and sustaining commercial relationships. Uh, that aspect that has to do with mediation and conciliation essentially postulates that instead of having a, a decision as to who is right and who is wrong, let's focus on what can we do together, how can we work together to find a mutual solution. With all of the benefits that you've mentioned, why is it that we're not exploring that? Why are we so litigation prone as a country? Well, um, well I would put it to uh, our culture. 
you know, um, I think there's a huge amount of ethics that has to be infused into not just uh, you know the the, call, the the litigation and dispute resolution culture itself, but also even business culture. Uh, you know, we, when the stakes are very high, the first instinct of uh, the parties to the dispute uh, is to secure an advantage, and so you see people rushing to court to try to get an injunction to get the upper hand in the hope that that basically will um, force the other party to accept less than optimal terms uh, for that party from that party's perspective. So um, you, one can very easily understand business people wanting to seize the, you know, the high ground whenever a dispute arises. Uh, ultimately, they will try to resolve it in court or through ADR. Um, but I think another reason, perhaps, why ADR doesn't work, and that's the arbitration part of it, is the fact that you know, the legal regime that we have had, uh, that's the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1988, uh, has proved not to be the optimal kind of legislation that we could have had. It hasn't solved, for instance, the problem of after you finish arbitration, parties then rush to court and you start as if you had never done arbitration at all in the first place and you can go all the way up to the Supreme Court. So indeed, instead of having 15 to 16 years of trying to resolve a dispute, you could actually have 20 uh, because you've spent some of it trying to resolve the matter in arbitration and then you start litigation all over again. That is a, is a, is a disincentive to arbitrating in, 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 in many African countries and something which uh, needs to be focused on as part of improving the ease of doing business environment. You've talked about the laws being outdated, but who has the responsibility for doing something about that in terms of reforming the laws? Well, I, I would say it's all relevant stakeholders. Right. Um, so the, the legislature, the National Assembly, um, the judiciary itself, the judges, and the lawyers, uh, particularly commercial lawyers who practice at the commercial bar, they all have the responsibility for doing so. Then you have uh, you know, ad advocacy groups, like the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, and I'm quite aware in my role as the chairman of the arbitration center of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, that the Chamber of Commerce has what it calls a dispute management program, which essentially uh, helps it fo means that it focuses on in what areas can we reform the laws and in what areas can we provide better services to parties who seek alternative dispute resolution services. Now, there's been a product, that there's been two products from, from, from those activities. Uh, just two weeks ago, the Senate passed a bill for reform of arbitration in Nigeria. And one of the important uh, features of that bill is that it tries to bring finality 